Welcome to this Mass Made Easy video on correlation and regression. To start with, let's take a look at correlation and scatter graph. When we have bivariate data, one variable will be the independent variable and another will be the dependent variable. Now the independent variable is the one that you can control, okay? And this goes on the x-axis, so let's just note that down. So independent variable, the independent variable, this goes on the x-axis, okay? And in that case then, the dependent variable is the one that is being affected. And this goes on the y-axis, so let's just know that as well. So the dependent variable goes on the y-axis, okay? Now there won't always be a clear independent and dependent variable, and in that case, it's not as important which way around they would go on a scatter graph. Now, in terms of correlation, this comes in three flavors. We have positive correlation, and with positive correlation, notice we start in the bottom left here, and we finish in this top right here of our graph, okay? And with positive correlation, what we see here is that as one of the variables increases, the other variable also increases here. Okay, so let's write this in a different color. So this is positive correlation. Okay, so this is positive correlation. So what other correlation do we have? Well, we also have negative correlation. Okay, and notice with negative correlation, we start in the top left here and we finish down in the bottom right. And for negative correlation, what we can see here is that as one of the variables increases, so as x increases here, the y variable decreases. Okay, so that's a negative correlation. So that's negative correlation. And finally, we also have no correlation. And with no correlation, we can essentially see a pattern within the data like this. Okay, so we can't tell if it's positive correlation or negative. There is no obvious pattern sense of the data. Okay, so let's just know that as well. So that's no correlation here. Okay, so there's no clear link between the variables. Now, we also have to be slightly careful here. So if we just clear all of the writing here and our graphs, we also have to be careful because correlation essentially can be in forms of clusters. So here, if we just take a look at this now, what we can see here is we have these clusters within the data. However, the general trend here is negative correlation. But within the clusters, what we can see here is positive correlation. So if you were to take a look at each of these, we almost have like positive correlation within each cluster like this. Okay, but the general trend is of negative correlation here. Okay, so positive correlation in the clusters. So positive correlation within the clusters. However, the general trend here is negative correlation. However, negative correlation overall. Okay, oops, didn't need to do that. Let's just undo that. So if we just quickly erase that. So overall, we have negative correlation here, okay? And finally, we should also be aware that when we're talking about correlation, we can have strong correlation or weak correlation. So in strong correlation, the data is very close to forming a line. And with weak correlation, the data is not close to forming a line. We also have outliers here, and these will look very obvious on a scatter graph. So, in that case, if you have very strong positive correlation, however, one of the points would say be up here in this top left corner, then it would be clear that this is an outlier, okay? So, in that case, you would ignore these in subsequent calculations. But if you do plan to ignore any outliers, make sure that you clearly mark it on the graph as such, okay? So that gives us everything we need there for correlation and scatter graphs. Moving on now to take a look at regression. 
So the regression line of y on x is the line of best fit. And it's always written in the form y equals a plus bx. So a plus bx. And notice this is a form that we're very familiar with. In this case, a is the y-intercept. Okay, so a is the y-intercept. And in that case, b here represents the gradient. So b is the gradient. So notice here, this is of the form y equals mx plus c. But we've just changed our m here to be b, and our c is just a. Okay. Now the regression line can be used to predict the values of the dependent variable, and this comes in two flavors. We have extrapolation, so extrapolation here, and with extrapolation, what we're saying here is if the value of x being used in the prediction falls outside of the range of the values of x in the data, then this predicted value might be unreliable. We also have interpolation, so let's just note this as well interpolation and with interpolation here if the value of x being used in the prediction falls inside the range of the values of x in the data then the predicted value should be reliable okay so essentially there that gives us everything we need for regression and that concludes this mass media video on correlation and regression